Actor Clint Eastwood is one lucky guy. He's dated a lot of the most beautiful women in Hollywood. From a blind date that turned into a first love to a 14-year affair that ended in a very ugly and public court battle, Clint Eastwood's love life has been as varied as his film career. So, who is Clint Eastwood's girlfriend? Join us as we delve into every woman Clint Eastwood dated or hooked up with. Maggie Johnson Clint Eastwood's journey into marriage with Maggie Johnson has its roots in the spring of 1953 a time when he had recently concluded his military service and was contemplating attending Los Angeles City College, as documented in Richard Schickel's Clint Eastwood, a biography. His plans, however, took an unexpected turn when he visited a friend in San Francisco before starting school. During this visit, Eastwood was introduced to Maggie Johnson, a University of California Berkeley student, through a blind date orchestrated by his friend. Notably, Johnson was already in a relationship at the time, but the encounter left a lasting impression on both of them. Johnson vividly recalled the moment she descended the sorority house stairs and Eastwood turned around, revealing a striking and understated presence that appealed to her. Their initial connection was immediate, leading to several subsequent dates. However, even as their relationship blossomed, Eastwood was simultaneously involved with other individuals. Before relocating to Los Angeles, he became a father to another woman in Seattle. Despite these complications, when Eastwood arrived in L.A. later that year, he continued dating Johnson, who had completed her college education and moved to Alhambra, California, to live with her family. The evolution of their relationship prompted discussions about marriage, a topic Eastwood approached with caution due to his lingering hesitations. Eventually, overcoming his reservations, Eastwood decided to propose. On December 19, 1953, they exchanged vows marking the beginning of their marital journey. However, unbeknownst to Eastwood at the time, just a few months before this union, his daughter Lori Murray was born and subsequently placed for adoption. Although Clint Eastwood and Maggie Johnson entered into marriage, the journey was not without its challenges. The initial year of their union proved to be tumultuous, with Eastwood openly characterizing it as terrible. The actor candidly admitted to still harboring a desire to do as he pleased, hinting at the strains within their relationship. In the late 1950s, the complexity of Eastwood's personal life deepened as he engaged in an extramarital affair, resulting in the birth of his second child, Kimber Lynn, in 1964. The extent of Johnson's awareness of the affair remains unclear. In Fritz Mainz's account in Clint Eastwood, a biography, a mutual friend of the couple, Johnson had once inquired about Eastwood's fidelity to which Maynes, wanting to shield her from the truth, provided reassurances emphasizing Eastwood's commitment. Reflecting on this period later, Eastwood shared with Playboy that he believed Johnson to be a woman who knows how much room I need. The understanding, albeit with its complexities, seemed to shape their evolving dynamic. The couple continued to expand their family with the arrival of their son, Kyle Eastwood in 1968, and their second child, Allison Eastwood, born in 1972. Their life together led them to Carmel-by-the-Sea, California, where they invested seven years in constructing their dream home. However, amid the endeavor, the strains in their marriage intensified. Exacerbated by rumors of Eastwood's affair with his co-star, Sandra Locke, the couple found themselves entangled in disagreements over the construction of their home, becoming a source of contention. These disputes, coupled with the alleged affair, contributed to the gradual unraveling of their marriage. The idyllic surroundings of Carmel by the Sea bore witness to both the dreams they built and the eventual dissolution of their union. After years of navigating the complexities of Clint Eastwood's affair with Sandra Locke, the inevitable arrived in 1979 when the couple officially decided to part ways. The formalization of their divorce occurred in 1984, culminating in a reported $25 million settlement for Maggie Johnson. 
Remarkably, despite the end of their marital journey, Eastwood and Johnson managed to preserve a cordial relationship over the years, evolving into lasting friends. Their amicable bond endured beyond the legalities of divorce. In a notable demonstration of their enduring connection, Johnson stood by Eastwood's side alongside their children when he assumed the role of mayor of Carmel-by-the-Sea in 1986. This shared experience showcased a commitment to family and mutual support that transcended the complexities of their romantic past. Fast forward to July 2022, their daughter Allison shed light on the present state of their relationship, providing insights into a remarkable post-divorce dynamic. Allison revealed that the former couple not only maintained a friendship, but continued to celebrate holidays together. Allison expressed gratitude for her parents' commitment to prioritizing their family ties, emphasizing her mother's role in nurturing an ethos that transcended marital status. According to Allison, Maggie Johnson played a pivotal role in conveying the message that, irrespective of the legalities, family unity was paramount. The Thanksgiving gatherings and shared celebrations became a testament to a unique family dynamic where friendship and mutual respect persevered beyond the boundaries of conventional divorce narratives. Roxanne Tunis While still in the midst of his marriage to Maggie Johnson, Clint Eastwood's life took a dramatic turn when he encountered stuntwoman Roxanne Tunis on the set of Rawhide in 1959, a series that marked a significant chapter in his career. What transpired next was a clandestine affair that unfolded over an astonishing 14-year span, revealing a parallel narrative to Eastwood's public life. The affair with Tunis took an unexpected turn when she became pregnant with Eastwood's child. In 1964, Kimber Lynn. Eastwood entered the world, the result of this secret liaison. Eastwood's revelation that he remained unaware of Tunis's pregnancy until a year after Kimber's birth adds a layer of complexity to this already intricate tale. Describing the moment he learned of his newfound fatherhood, Eastwood likened it to having the wind knocked out of him. Despite the shock, Eastwood demonstrated a sense of responsibility by making arrangements to provide for Kimber. However, the circumstances surrounding their relationship were marked by infrequent visits, with Eastwood acknowledging that he saw his daughter only every three or four months. Tunis, entwined in this clandestine connection, continued to be a presence in Eastwood's life, visiting him on film sets and in his office. The lingering question of when their affair concluded remains shrouded in mystery leaving a chapter of Eastwood's private life open to speculation, Sandra Locke. In 1972, Clint Eastwood's path crossed with actress Sandra Locke during auditions for his film, Breezy. At that time, Eastwood was still in his marriage to Maggie Johnson, while Locke was married to her childhood best friend, Gordon Anderson. Although Locke didn't secure a role in Breezy, fate intervened casting her in Eastwood's 1975 film, The Outlaw Josie Wales, igniting a connection that transcended the screen. The onset of their affair, as detailed in Locke's autobiography, The Good, The Bad, and The Very Ugly, A Hollywood Journey, unfolded against the backdrop of Eastwood's assertion that his relationship with Johnson had reached a point of no return. Locke's account sheds light on the complexities of Eastwood's personal life during this period. As filming wrapped, Eastwood and Locke's connection deepened, with Locke even moving into one of his residences. The speculation surrounding their romance intensified during the shooting of the gauntlet, prompting headlines and public curiosity. Despite mounting rumors, Eastwood and Locke presented a united front, consistently maintaining that they were merely friends. Locke emphasized her profound respect, admiration, and fondness for Eastwood deflecting prying inquiries about the nature of their relationship. In 1978, a pivotal year, Eastwood and Johnson officially separated. Locke, in her autobiography, alleged significant personal sacrifices during this time, including two abortions and a two-ball legation, all purportedly influenced by Eastwood's expressed desire to refrain from having more children. 
The tumultuous relationship between Sandra Locke and Clint Eastwood extended over a decade, gradually evolving into a toxic dynamic. Intriguingly, Locke maintained her legal marriage to Gordon Anderson during this period, their connection reportedly platonic due to Anderson's sexual orientation. As the complexities of Eastwood and Locke's relationship unfolded, additional entanglements emerged. Eastwood found himself in affairs with both Jocelyn Reeves and Francis Fisher, further complicating the intricate web of romantic affiliations. By the later stages of their association, Eastwood and Locke had become increasingly estranged. In April 1989, a pivotal moment transpired when, as reported by the Washington Post, Eastwood purportedly relocated all of Locke's belongings to storage and changed the locks on their shared residence. This marked a turning point, leading Locke to initiate legal action against Eastwood. In her palimony lawsuit, she detailed the emotional toll she endured, citing humiliation, mental anguish, severe emotional and physical distress, and mental and physical harm suffered during their relationship. Seeking a resolution, Locke requested a $1.3 million share of their accumulated wealth, ownership of several properties, including one leased to Anderson, and more. The legal proceedings encountered delays, languishing for over a year. During this period, Locke grappled with her health, undergoing treatment for breast cancer. The impasse finally broke in 1990, when an agreement was reached. Eastwood would drop her palimony lawsuit in exchange for a $1.5 million development deal at Warner Brothers. Possession of the residence shared with Anderson and financial compensation amounting to $450,000, along with ongoing support payments. Despite the legal settlement in 1990, Sandra Locke's tumultuous journey with Clint Eastwood continued to unfold. Five years after their initial resolution, Locke took legal action against Eastwood once again. In this instance, she filed a lawsuit accusing him of fraud and breach of financial duty. Her claim asserted that all the projects she presented to the studio were systematically rejected, alleging that Eastwood orchestrated this to hinder her professional opportunities. The legal wrangling between Locke and Eastwood reached another settlement in September 1996, this time out of court and for an undisclosed sum, as reported by the Los Angeles Times. This phase of their legal battles highlighted the ongoing complexities and tensions that lingered between the former partners. Tragically, in November 2018, Sandra Locke passed away due to cardiac arrest related to breast and bone cancer. Remarkably, throughout her life, she maintained her marriage to Gordon Anderson, and the two remained close friends until her death. Locke's reflections on her relationship with Eastwood, shared with the Washington Post, conveyed a sense of regret and a wish for a different trajectory. Expressing her sentiments, Locke admitted, My biggest misfortune, my greatest regret, is that I wish I'd cut my time with Clint in half. I wouldn't say I wish I never had the relationship, but I wish I'd found a way, I'd understood who he was, where it would end, five or six years earlier so I could have gotten on with things. Jacelyn Reeves Amidst his relationship with Sandra Locke, Clint Eastwood encountered Jacelyn Reeves, a flight attendant whose connection with the actor has remained relatively private. The details of their relationship are shrouded in mystery, but one significant aspect is the arrival of their two children during their time together. In 1986, Jocelyn Reeves gave birth to their son, Scott Eastwood, adding another member to Eastwood's expanding family. Two years later, in 1988, the couple welcomed their daughter, Catherine Eastwood. The arrival of Scott and Catherine marked a significant chapter in Eastwood's personal life, with the complexity of his relationships extending beyond the public eye. Francis Fisher in the late months of 1988, during his involvement with Sandra Locke and Jacelyn Reeves, Clint Eastwood encountered actress Frances Fisher, setting the stage for a new chapter in his romantic life. Their paths initially crossed when Fisher was cast in the film Pink Cadillac, 
but they didn't officially meet until the pre-production party for the movie. The spark between them was immediate, with Fisher describing it as love at first sight. The enchanting moment occurred when she entered the room on roller skates, and Eastwood cast his gaze upon her. Fisher recounted the experience, stating, He looked right at me, the way he does every other woman in the world. But it got to me, too. I mean, when he turns it on, he can turn it on, and I just went, Oh my God, look at that. There was a human being there. I just saw such beauty in his presence, and I felt like a big piece of the puzzle had fallen in place, as shared in Clint Eastwood, a biography. Throughout the filming of Pink Cadillac and upon their return to Los Angeles, Eastwood and Fisher spent time together, fostering a connection that went beyond the professional realm. Eastwood's split with Locke made headlines in late 1989, surprising Fisher, as he had not disclosed their relationship. They began quietly dating and eventually moved in together. By 1992, they were making public appearances on red carpets, signaling the seriousness of their relationship. Fisher emphasized that as long as she knew Eastwood remained faithful, their relationship was steady, serious, and filled with enjoyment, as detailed in Eastwood's biography. In August 1993, Clint Eastwood and Frances Fisher welcomed their daughter, Francesca Ruth Eastwood marking what Fisher referred to as a miraculous period of family time together. The joy of their newfound parenthood, however, couldn't shield the relationship from the challenges that lay ahead. As 1993 drew to a close, signs of strain emerged. Personal conflicts, Fisher's discovery of Eastwood's children with Jacelyn Reeves, and paparazzi shots capturing Eastwood, kissing another woman contributed to the unraveling of their once close bond. In response to these challenges, Fisher decided to move into the guest house. By the spring of 1995, the couple had fully separated. Reflecting on the complexities of relationships, Fisher shared her insights shortly after the split with the LA Times, saying, with relationships with people, you're attracted to somebody for a reason. You follow it through, and if you can't get past the honeymoon stage and get into the deeper meanings of why you're together, you're doomed to just stop when things start getting tough. Despite the challenges, Eastwood and Fisher managed to maintain amicable terms post-separation. They even made joint appearances at red carpet events. In 2004, Fisher expressed her perspective to SF Gate, stating, I believe when you have loved someone, if you don't destroy it with pettiness, then the love is always there. Dina Eastwood, nay Ruiz. While Clint Eastwood was in a relationship with Francis Fisher, he crossed paths with news anchor Dina Eastwood, formerly Dina Ruiz, who happened to be local to Carmel by the Sea. Their first encounter occurred after she interviewed him in 1992, and their connection grew when they met again at a local event. Describing their initial interaction, Eastwood shared with Carmel Magazine, We got along really well, and I guess we flirted a little bit because she took the film back to KSBW, and one of her associates said, You're going to marry him. Another serendipitous moment unfolded at a function at Spanish Bay, where they ended up holding hands and engaging in playful antics. While their connection sparked in the early 90s, it wasn't until after Eastwood split with Fisher that their romantic journey truly began. In early 1995, a photograph captured them kissing at a golf tournament, signaling the start of their public relationship. In a whirlwind of events, Eastwood proposed to Dina in September 1995. By December of the same year, he took her to a courthouse in Haley, Idaho, to obtain their marriage license. The spontaneity continued when, in March 1996, Eastwood organized a wedding ceremony at his friend Steve Wynn's estate in Las Vegas while Dina was on a girl's trip. The entire event was planned in just 48 hours, creating what Dina later described to people as her dream wedding. Following their spontaneous wedding, Clint Eastwood and Dina quickly learned that they were expecting their first child together. In December 1996, they welcomed their daughter, Morgan Eastwood, 
The couple embraced the joys and challenges of parenthood, with Dina sharing in a 2007 interview with Carmel Magazine that the longest they'd ever spend apart was maybe 10 days. Dina spoke warmly about Clint, describing him as the least pretentious person she had ever met. She appreciated his conscientious approach to nature, recalling moments when he encouraged their daughter Morgan not to pick flowers but to let them thrive. She playfully dubbed him St. Francis of Assisi for his gentle and caring demeanor. In 2012, the Eastwoods invited the public into their lives through the reality show Mrs. Eastwood and Company, providing a glimpse into Dina's life with Morgan and stepdaughter Francesca. However, the show caused some tension, with sources revealing to people that Clint Eastwood was furious about the show, as it seemed to conflict with his values. By June of that year, amid the show's airing, signs of strain emerged in their marriage. Although still residing in the same house, reports surfaced that Clint and Dina were sleeping in separate rooms. During this challenging time, Dina found support in her friend Scott Fisher, who was undergoing a divorce and had recently returned from living in Australia. Despite Dina Eastwood's assertion that her relationship with Scott Fisher was platonic, the situation took a turn when Scott's ex-wife, Erica Fisher, expressed concerns about the nature of their connection. Erica reached out to Clint Eastwood in early 2013, sharing her apprehensions. By March of the same year, surprising many, Clint and Erica were romantically involved, leaving Dina in total shock at this unexpected development. In response to the evolving situation, Dina took legal steps, filing for legal separation from Clint in September 2013. She sought joint custody of their daughter, Morgan, and spousal support. Despite the challenges, Dina maintained a positive public stance, asking her Twitter followers not to speak negatively about Clint. She described him as a wonderful, good natured, brilliant person. In October 2003, Dina officially filled for divorce, sitting irreconcilable differences as the reason for their separation. Throughout this challenging period, Dina emphasized that she and Clint remained on good terms, stating on Bethany Frankel's talk show that Clint was a lovely and loving person. He's the sweetest. He is a loving, kind, low-key person. So my intuition was still great on marrying a good person, Dina shared with Frankel. In July 2016, Dina embarked on a new chapter, marrying Scott Fisher in Santa Barbara, California, Erica Tomlinson Fisher. While still in a marriage with Dina, Clint Eastwood found himself at the center of another romantic episode. Erica Tomlinson Fisher, in the midst of finalizing her divorce from Scott Fisher, a close friend of Dina Eastwood, reached out to Clint. The catalyst for her outreach was the rekindled connection between Dina and Scott, which raised concerns for Erica about the nature of their revived relationship. Their initial conversation marked the beginning of an ongoing dialogue, leading to frequent phone conversations. In March 2013, Clint and Erica transitioned from acquaintances to a romantic couple. Despite keeping their relationship private, they were photographed together in Los Angeles, the images subsequently making their way to the public domain via the Daily Mail. The intricacies of how and when their relationship concluded remain undisclosed. Christina Sandera, Clint Eastwood's romantic journey continued as he entered a relationship with Christina Sandera in the summer of 2014. At the time, Christina, who worked as a hostess at Eastwood's Mission Ranch Hotel in Carmel, California, captured the attention of the iconic actor and director, paving the way for their ongoing romance. Both Eastwood and Sandera have maintained a private stance regarding the intricacies of their relationship, keeping the details away from the public eye. Nevertheless, their connection has endured, and they have been a couple for over seven years now. Christina Sandera, known for her discretion, 
had a relatively low profile before her association with Eastwood, with her recognition primarily stemming from her romantic involvement with the renowned figure in the entertainment industry. Other affairs and casual dating. In addition to his marriage with Johnson and the extended affair with Roxanne Tunis, Clint Eastwood's romantic history includes several other relationships and casual dating encounters. Mamie Van Doren, 1955. During the filming of Star in the Dust in 1955, Eastwood had an affair with actress Mamie Van Doren. Despite her starring role and Eastwood's uncredited part, their relationship became a notable chapter in Eastwood's romantic history. Anita Loest, late 1950s, early 1960s. In the late 1950s to early 1960s, Eastwood was romantically involved with competitive swimmer Anita Loest. According to Loest's biographer Rhea Brown, she terminated a pregnancy by Eastwood without informing him. Gal Green, 1970s. Eastwood had a fling with restaurant critic Gail Green in the 1970s. Their relationship began after an interview on the set of Two Mules for Sister Sarah, Inger Stevens, Gene Seberg, Joanne Harris, 1970s. According to biographer McGilligan, Eastwood had affairs with his co-stars Inger Stevens on Hang 'em High, Gene Seberg on Paint Your Wagon, and Joanne Harris on The Beguiled, Jill Banner. Catherine Deneuve, Susan St. James, Keeley Smith, Bridget Byrne, Joan Lundberg, Hitchcock. Aside from co-stars, Eastwood had relationships with various actresses, including Jill Banner, Catherine Deneuve, Susan St. James, singer Keeley Smith, columnist Bridget Byrne, and socialite Joan Lundberg Hitchcock. Early 1980s. After his split from Locke, Eastwood resumed his womanizing ways, getting involved with story analyst Megan Rose, actress Jamie Rose, and animal rights activist Jane Brolin. Barbara Streisand, Marissa Berenson, John Grace, Danny Crane, Barbara Minty. Following his breakup with Locke, Eastwood dated a diverse array of women, including Barbara Streisand, co-star Marissa Berenson, Carmel Mayer, John Grace, actress Danny Crane, and model Barbara Minty. Post Dina Ruiz. After his split with Ruiz, Eastwood was linked with photographer Erica Tomlinson Fisher, not related to his former fling Francis Fisher, and restaurant hostess Christina Sandera. This marked another chapter in Eastwood's complex and varied romantic history. Although Clint Eastwood has only been married to two women over the course of his lifetime, he has been romantically involved with many, many more. Were these revelations as surprising to you as they were to me? How many of these scandalous stories do you recall hearing about? If there's one we missed, share it with us in the comments below. As always, give this video a thumbs up to show your support. If you want to stay in the loop and be among the first to catch our upcoming videos, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. See you next time.